Okay, let's talk about how to solve for x with this particular equation. This is practicing something called uh, solving for a particular uh, indicated variable. And you can see here in our equation, we have three variables. We have x, y, and t. Then we have some numbers going on. So I want you to solve for x, or you could uh, state this problem as write this equation in terms of x. But effectively, I want you to shuffle things around and, and do your stuff. So we have x is equal to all this other stuff over here. This is a um, very critical skill in algebra and in mathematics. Uh, and it comes up a lot, especially working with formulas. And uh, a lot of students tend to get confused with this, but it's absolutely necessary that you know how to rewrite um, equations and formulas in terms of different variables. So we're kind of practicing this here. I've also done uh, other videos on this topic. Just check out my um, uh, pre-algebra and algebra playlist in terms of uh, solving for an indicated variable, uh, working with formulas, etc. So this is going to be kind of practice with this. And I'm obviously going to solve this problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I'd like to believe is one of the best online math help programs anywhere. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, soon. Very excited about that. It's taken me years to construct uh, that course. I, all my courses are taking me years to produce because I don't do a little quick tutorials. I truly teach. I teach how to solve the most uh, common uh, problems, thousands and thousands of problems. I put a lot of effort into uh, uh, all my math courses, but I also do it in a lot with uh, the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, HiSET, TASK, SAT, ACT, AccuPlace, or Alex, CLEP, uh, teacher certification, nursing entrance, ASVAB, you can see there's a ton of reasons why people study mathematics or need to know math to get through these very important exams. So you don't have to be taking a math class to actually be needing to learn math. So I can help you out. Just go to my site, check out my full course catalog. I probably have what you uh, are studying for. If I don't, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. I also work a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So I have a great homeschool learning program. So if that's you, I can definitely help you out. And then obviously... If you're struggling in your math class, I can help you out. Now, uh, one thing you need to be doing to help yourself out is that is taking great math notes. Over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take outstanding math notes almost always do very well. And then the reverse is true. Those students who are like, I got a photographic memory. My best friend's in this class. He takes better notes than I do. Um, I like checking out my social media and talking to my buddies in class. And listen, I made all those mistakes, so no one's perfect, but I'm just telling you right now, you have to remain constantly vigilant uh, and focused and engaged in terms of learning anything, especially mathematics. There's just too much information. So the evidence that you're paying attention and focusing is your notes, okay? So look at your notes and just be honest about, you know, hey, are my notes good? Would you be proud to give your notes to someone else? So um, mo most students need to improve in this area, okay? So don't feel bad, just start improving, you know, and as you make improvements, believe me, everything will get better for you. But in the meantime, you need something to study from, so I offer detailed comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry, find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solve this problem here, uh, but let's quickly, quickly review some fundamental concepts of what we're talking about. So let's take this equation or this formula, okay? So we got uh, force is equal to mass times acceleration, okay? So it's a basic physics formula, and uh, right here, this formula is written in terms of F, okay? Or it's solved for S or F or force. Let me write that a little bit better, okay? So I can say, well, uh, uh, write this equation in terms of acceleration or A. So we have, this, we have force, mass, and acceleration. They're related to one another. The mass times acceleration is equal to the force, but I can rewrite this uh, formula or this algebraic equation in terms of A, or I would say solve for A in this um, uh, formula or equation. So how does that work? So this is a quick review. If you don't know how to do this 
uh, prompt. And this one here is going to be way too advanced for you. So you want to go back and review the fundamentals on this. So again, I have uh, various uh, uh, videos in my pre-algebra, Algebra 1 uh, playlist. And uh, if you really want to know this stuff, I would jump into like my algebra course. I could definitely teach you that. Okay, so, uh, so this is how this works. So what you're going to do is we're going to think of, I want to solve this for A. You're going to think of A as the only variable. So in other words, you're going to think of M and F temporarily uh, in your brain as like numbers. Okay, so let's just make up some numbers. Let's say F, let's just say like that was like a 10 and then M was like uh, a 2. Okay, we're just conceptually treating uh, these as numbers and then we have our A there. So if I wanted to solve for A, how do I solve this basic al uh, algebra problem for A? Well, I need to divide both sides of the equation by 2, okay? And then I would have what A is equal to, all right? But if you recall, F, okay, was, this 10 was like F, okay? And the 2 was like M, all right? So uh, F over M is equal to A, all right? That's how we solve uh, this particular equation. Let's do this again one more time. All right, so you're like, all right, I'm treating this as a number and this as a number, so I need to solve for A. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by M. So force over mass is equal to acceleration. All right, so now I just re uh, rewrote this equation. I solved for A or I wrote it in terms of A. So you need to know that terminology. So if you understand this, if this is like really easy for you, then you're ready for this problem. Okay, so here it is, um, and if uh, you want to pause the video and kind of, you know, work it out yourself before you see the solution, well, I want to do that now because I'm going to show you the solution right here. So kind of already worked it out. So let's go ahead and, and uh, get to it. All right, so I have this four, and I have parentheses. So anytime you have parentheses in an equation, that is a uh, situation where you have to use the distributive property. So i got to go four times x, y. Right, that's 4xy, and then 4 times this t, that's going to be 4t. Now, I want to solve for x. That's my goal, okay? So what I'm going to have to be thinking uh, here is I need to collect up all the x's. All right, I'm going to have to kind of group them all up. So that's going to be kind of like my uh, game plan. So where are my x's? Well, I have an x in here, and I have another x over here. So this 4t, I'm treating as a numeric value. Uh, 10 is obviously a number. And then 4 and y, I'm going to be treating, well, 4 is obviously a number, but y, I'm going to be thinking of it as a number as well. So let's see the best way to do this. So let's go ahead and group together, start getting these x's closer to one another. So I'm going to move this x uh, term over next to this guy so we can write this as 4x, 4xy plus x, okay, then I got my uh, negative 4t over here. That way I could just kind of have my x's close together as I'm working this through. All right, so what uh, do I want to do now? Well, here, I'm going to go ahead and move this over, all right? I'm going to move this over to the other side. So remember, if I'm solving for x, I want my variables to the left and my numbers to the right. So the only variables that I want on the left-hand side are going to be things that are related to x. And then everything else, in this particular problem, that would be y and all the other numbers, okay, are going to be on the other side. Well, actually, t as well. So here, if I have a minus 4t, I can add 4t to both sides of the equation, all right, to get rid of that negative 14. That's what you want to do, that negative 4t, excuse me. All right, so... Uh, that leaves us with 10 plus 14. You could just pause the video and kind of study more specifically what I'm doing. So that leaves me now with 4xy, pl uh, 4xy plus x is equal to 10 plus 4t. So that's that's good. Now, I got to get the x by itself. So at this point, I need to use my factoring skills, all right? I need to factor out that x, uh, and I'm going to factor out the GCF. Okay, which in, in fact would be x. So I factor out x, I can write that as x times 4y plus 1. Because if I use the distributive property, if I multiply x times this 4y, I get back to this, and this x times 1, I get back to this. So I can factor out the x. Now I got 1x, 
and that's what I want to solve for. So this is good, right? But the only way I could have factored this out is I gotta have to shovel these guys, had to get these guys next to one another, then I could factor out the GCF. Okay, so at this point in the problem, remember x is the only thing that you're treating as a variable. So this whole thing, just think of it as a number, and then we got this other value over here. And to uh, get x by itself, all I needed to do is divide both sides of the equation by this right here, this 4y plus 1. And doing so leaves me with this. x is equal to 10 plus 4t over 4y plus 1. And that's it. Now, if you were able to solve that problem, I am going to give you a happy face with a mohawk, an A plus, and a 100%. As a matter of fact, I'll give you a couple stars as well for good order. That's very, very good, okay? Um, remember, uh, solving for indicated variables, this is a necessary algebra skill. This gets students into a lot of hot water, especially, oh, geez, just anywhere, okay, whether it's working with formulas, uh, working with systems, uh, substitution method. Um, there's a ton of different scenarios where you need to be able to solve for an indicated um, variable. So this is not one of these kind of trivial type of skills. They're like, yeah, well, I didn't get this right, but I don't really need to know that. Believe me when I tell you, you do need to know this. And uh, the way to learn this is to start off with the easy stuff like this. Okay. Um, again, I have a ton of videos in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist. Um, uh, I talk about formulas. Um, look for my videos that involve formulas or solve for an indicated variable, solve for a specific variable, or better, better yet, just sign up for my algebra course. I'll teach you all this stuff and more. Okay, so if this video was helpful in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time, have hundreds and hundreds of videos organized from basic to advanced mathematics in my uh, various playlists on my channel, all there for you. And I'm posting new stuff all the time, but all my best material will be found in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.